Hi everyone and welcome to a new video on the CBI channel. In this tutorial series, we're creating a dashboard app with Python Django as our backend and React.js in the front end. And the objective of this application is to make sure that our users can get insights in our app by having the data of our database displayed in some nice looking charts and visuals. Now, this is not the first video in this series. We've already done three before in which we've completed the initial setup of our Django backend and our React.js frontend. And we've also already created some pages in our frontend and created a nice looking navigation menu so we can go to different pages. In this video, we're going to continue. We're going to be creating the models of our database and make sure that we actually have data in our database available to visualize in the next few videos. And in the end, it will look something like this, where we have a database with different tables linking to each other and it being populated with a file of around a thousand rows. In this video, we're going to be following six main steps. We're going to first start with inspecting the data that we want to use for the visualizations. Now, this is going to be a little bit different than usual because I'm going to import a file of data instead of creating the data ourselves in the database. And that is simply because it's much easier. Next, I'm going to explain you the database design. So how we are going to set up our models in our Django backend. Then we're actually going to realize that and we're going to be creating the database models in our backend code. To make sure that that structure is then presented in the database, we're going to be migrating our database and then installing something called DB Browser to view our database through a user interface. As a last step, we're going to make sure that the data that we want to visualize is actually inside our database by doing a simple import. Now let's start by inspecting the data that we actually want to use in this series. I found a data set online that displays different transactions inside of a supermarket, which we can use to create different charts and visuals. And inside the data that you can see on the screen now, we have a unit price and a quantity that has been sold. And that is accompanied with a date and different type of dimensions would tell something about the transaction. We have some product information. We also have some customer details and some details on the location on where it has been sold. And this is what we are going to be using inside of our application. Now, what you often see in database design for Django is that we have a main table with all of the transactions. And then we have foreign key tables where we store some information about those transactions. So the data will not actually be stored like this, but in a little bit of a different way. And that way is right now on your screen. What we're going to aim for is create one main table called supermarket sales. And then we want to create foreign keys to the different tables that are going to contain the dimensions. So the branch, the country, payment, the product line, the customer type and the gender are going to be stored in separate tables and link to the supermarket sales through the unique identifier. Now, to actually make sure that this file is going to fit our database structure, I already split it up in different files. So the supermarket sales table that you see right here is actually going to look like this, where we have a unit price, a quantity and a date, and then IDs that refer to the different dimensions. Then for each of the dimensions, I also have a separate file, which provides an ID and a name which can then be linked to the supermarket sales file through the identifier. So to provide an example, in this first line, we see a quantity of seven with a branch ID of one. And that branch ID of one is linking to the branch table. And if we take a look at ID number one, you can see that it refers to the name A and the branch A as the description. So that's the way that we are going to be setting this up. And I'm also going to make sure that you guys have access to this data as well. So in the description, there will be a link to a file share where you can find all of the different files. So you can just import them into the database as well. The next step that we need to take is make sure that we actually have the structure of our database defined in our models.py file. And that is going to be inside of our backend folder and then inside of the data folder. And in here, we can define all of the tables and the attributes that we want to have inside of our database. And if we take a look at this picture, it means that we're going to create a table for all of the blue boxes and also one for the green box. 
So let's get started and create the blue ones at first. Now these dimension tables are going to be incredibly simplistic. So we're going to start with the one for the country where we can say class and then country because that's going to be the name of the table. And then we can say that it's a models.model. And in there we can define all of the attributes that we would like to see. Now, the only thing that we really need is the name and that is going to be a character field. So we can do models.car field and in there specify the max length. So the number of characters that is allowed. And I'm going to set that to 200 for now. Now in our example here for country, you can see that we also have an ID column, but we actually don't need to create that because Django creates that by default. Now, the next ones are actually going to be really simple because most of our dimensions will only have a name for now. So I'm going to copy over the country, paste it, and then say that the next one for gender is going to be exactly the same because we also only have a name there. Then we can copy it over again and create one for the customer type. Then we can do the same for the branch. But for the branch, we also have a description, which I added to the Excel file right here to provide a little bit more detail. So next to the name attribute right here, we're also going to add one for description. And our descriptions are going to be very short, so we can leave the max length on 200. Now, product line is also going to be very simple. So we're going to just copy over the one for customer type and call it product line. Now, the last one that we also need to add is a payment. And for payment, I've actually added another field next to the name, which is called category. And that is going to tell us a little bit more about what kind of payment this is going to be. So we're calling the model payment. And if we go to our Excel sheet again, you can see that we have a field for category, which identifies whether something is digital or analog. Okay, so now all of our dimensions have been added to our project, but we still need the main table. So we're going to create another class and we're going to be calling it supermarket sales. And this is similarly to the other one, it's going to be a models.model. Now in here, we're going to start by defining the fields that are not foreign keys. And if we recall correctly, you can see that those are unit price, quantity, and date. So we're going to start off by defining the unit price. And here it's not a character field, but a models.decimal field. And in there, we're going to define two parameters. We're going to state that max digits is going to be equal to 10. And that means that both the whole numbers as the decimal numbers uh, can be 10 characters in total. And then we're going to define that the allowed decimal places is equal to two because I only want to see two decimals. And you can also see right here that that completely reflects our data because we only have a few numbers and the max of two decimals. Now, we also have a field for quantity and that quantity is going to be another type of field. It's going to be models.integer field. Now, the integer field covers a wide range of negative to positive numbers and our numbers are not that big. So we can just define it like this and then we will correctly store it. We also have a date field and for that we're going to say models.date field. And just like that, that one is complete. Now, next we will have all of the foreign keys which link the supermarket sales to the actual dimension tables. So let's start with the one for the country. We can define that country is going to be equal to models dot foreign key and then we say that the table that we want to link to is country because that's the one that we want to link to and we can also state that on delete is equal to models dot cascade now whenever we define a foreign key field we always need to define what happens when we delete one of the dimensions and in this case we say if one of the dimensions is deleted we also want to delete the row in this table there are a lot of different options for the on delete statement, and you can find those in the Django documentation. Now for the other ones, this is gonna be exactly the same. So we can just copy it over for gender and then just change the attribute name there and say that we need to link to the gender table. And we can also do this for the customer type. 
and then also stated is the customer type table and same for branch product line and payment product line and that's equal to the product line and then we also have payment being equal to payment and just like this our table is complete and this will fit the structure that we've also defined in the excel file so we have now defined the structure of all of the tables inside of our database, but we still need to make sure that our database actually reflects what is in our code. Now to do that, we can migrate our changes and make sure that they're reflected in the database. So we're going to open a new terminal in our code editor, and in there we're going to cd into our backend, and then we're going to activate our virtual environment with venv slash scripts slash activate. Now we can use two commands to make sure that this structure gets applied to our database. First, we do python manage.py make migrations. And this is going to create a migration file with all of the different models that are specified right here. Now to apply those models, we do python manage.py and then migrate. And now all of the migrations have been applied to the database and they should be available in our db.sqlite3 file. And to make sure that we can view all of the tables of our database in a user interface, but also that we can import CSV files and make changes to our database, I want to see the SQLite file that we've just shown in our code inside of a user interface. And a tool that we can use for that is installing DB Browser for SQLite. Now this is a user interface that shows you all of the tables and attributes that you have inside of your database. And you can also add new records in there so you can modify your database while you're in development. And that is quite nice. Now this is all open source and free. I think there are also other alternatives that you can use, but this is the one that I like to use myself. So we're gonna to go to download on the top of the screen and I'm going to install the installer for 64-bit Windows. Now, once the file has been installed, you will get the SQLite setup wizard where you can just click next, accept the terms in the agreement, and then make sure that you say that you want to have DB browser as a program. And I'm also going to put it on my desktop because if you don't do this, you will not actually see anything on your computer. Then we can click next and I'm completely fine with the setup. And as a final step, we can click on install. And after a few seconds, the DB browser has been installed successfully. And if we now open the DB browser for SQLite, you can see that it's quite a basic user interface. And to get our database inside of this thing, we can just open the db.sqlite free file in that user interface. In the DB browser, we can click on open database. And then we're just gonna go to the location of our project, which in my case is on the desktop. And there in the backend folder, we have the db.sqlite file. We can click on open. And immediately when we open it, we can see a rundown of all of the different tables that we have inside of our database, including the ones that I've just created for branch, country, customer type, gender, payment, and product line. So that is looking just fine. And when we click on browse data, we can even take a look at it on the table level. And you can see that there's not any data in there right now. Now, our objective is to make sure that all of the data from our Excel sheet is populated in this overview right here. Now, we can do that in a few different ways, and I'm gonna show you both of them. The first thing, what we're gonna do for all of the dimensions, for example, the branch, is we can just create new rows right here. So for example, the three rows that we actually need for the branch. And from our Excel file, we can select the name and the description and just paste them in right here and then click on Write Changes, and then everything will be working just fine. Now, one thing that you need to be wary about is that your IDs are going to match the IDs that you have inside of your file. Otherwise, it will not link correctly to the total one. Now, we can do that otherwise as well by just also including the ID, and then we can, for example, go to the country and click on the three rows again, and then just paste it in right there. And then it will just also take the IDs that you have selected. 
Now I'm just going to continue and speed this up a little bit because I'm going to do it for all of the different dimensions. And the last one that we also need to do is the one for payment. So let's just copy over those three and make sure that it's all available in here. One, two, three, and then paste it in. Now we're gonna write changes and all of our dimensions will now successfully be populated inside of our database. Now we want to do the same thing, but then for our supermarket sales. Um, and you can see that what it expects is the ID, the unit price and the quantity, and also the date, and then the field names with an underscore and ID after all of them. And you can see in our total file that is reflected in here as well. Now, one thing we can probably do is just copy over the thousand rows and then click just one row in here and then say that I want to paste it. But that's gonna do all of the information in this one row because we really need to click on a thousand rows to make sure that it's all being populated. And that's not what we want to do. So I'm just going to delete these rows for now and write those changes. And we're going to actually import a CSV into this to populate all of these fields. So how do we do that? Well, what we need to do is we need to copy over all of the data that we have in here, put it in a separate spreadsheet like this, and then we need to save this spreadsheet as a CSV file. So in the save as type, we're going to say that it's a CSV file and the name needs to be exactly the same as the table name inside of the DB browser. So data underscore supermarket sales. So in here we state data underscore supermarket sales. Now inside of our CSV file, we're also going to add one column right here called ID because that's also expected when we do this delivery. So we're just gonna go and scroll it all the way down. I think it's about a thousand rows that we have. And then we're going to save it. Now to get this inside of this data underscore supermarket sales table, we can click on file and then import and then table from CSV file. Then we're gonna to go to the file that we have just saved. And in here, you can see that the table name is data underscore supermarket sales. We select that the columns are in the first line, and then we can see all of the data that we have right here. Then we can click on okay, and it will recognize that there's already a table named data underscore supermarket sales. And it asks, do we want to import the data into it? And I'm going to say yes to all. And now we can see that all of our data has been correctly populated inside of our database and we have over a thousand records now in there. And then we want to do write changes. And when we do this, we get a foreign key constraint. So it's not writing it correctly. And if I check out what is going on, then I see that in the payment IDs, we get IDs from six and five. However, when we go to our payments table, you can see that we only have three right here. So I think there's something wrong with the order of the table. And when I compare it with the CSV file, we can indeed see that the product line ID and the payment ID columns are switched. So we need to make sure that these columns are exactly in the same order as what is inside of our database. So for now, I'm just going to insert a column right here and then make sure that payment ID precedes the product line ID. And let's save that. Now what we're going to do inside of our database is just select everything and say that we want to delete it and write those changes. And then we're just going to do a new import right here uh, with the same file, but then hopefully in the right order. And let's check if that is the case. Yeah, we now see the payment ID on the right line. And then we do OK and we select yes. And hopefully when we now do write changes, it works just fine. And just like that, we have enough data inside of our database to start visualizing it in the next few videos. And that is actually all for today. In this video, I showed you how you can create your database models and how we can make sure that data is imported inside of our database for this specific use case. In the next video, we're going to continue and we're going to make sure that we can bring this data from our backend to our frontend with an API. And that is going to cover both setting up the backend correctly and also making sure that we have an Axios instance that can bring it 
to the front end. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you did, please leave a like and subscribe. And I hope to see you in the next one. Bye-bye.